everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, the animal is going to fall into maybe a more feathery category because we are covering the oh-so-wonderful Andean condor. And our episode today is dedicated to Charlie, who wrote in via the Instagram and recommended one of the coolest birds nature has to offer. I am very excited to get into this episode, so I will have to try my absolute best to slow myself down because one of my symptoms of being excited is that I start talking a little bit too quickly. So I am just going to say where I got the facts for this episode from. The facts contained in this podcast episode are from nationalgeographic.com, cascada.travel, peregrinefund.org, and lastly, of course, as always, etimonline.com for the name Condor. Without these resources, this podcast episode would not have been possible. And so I greatly encourage you, if you would like to learn more about the Condor, or I'm sure about many other furry, scaly, and slimy friends, to go to those resources. They will be in the description or the show notes of this episode. For those who might be hearing impaired, transcripts are now officially available both on YouTube, on the YouTube Relax with Animal Facts, as well as on the website relaxwithanimalfacts.com. Keep in mind that there may be a few errors here or there in the episode transcript, but I have reviewed some of them and it seems to be pretty accurate. For those of you that wish to have your very own podcast episode and to learn about something cool, you can request your animal in one of three ways. You can follow the Instagram Relax with Animal Facts and send a direct message. You can go to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and go to the Animal Request tab. And lastly, you could always send an email directly to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. And now as we begin to wind down from our day, I would like for all of you to notice maybe where you are carrying some tension. For some it might be in the shoulders, for some it might be in the legs, you may have run a marathon for all I know, but what you'll notice is that everybody in this regard seems to be quite unique. For me today, for example, it is in my hands, as it almost always is, and so I would like for all of you to do your best right alongside me and relax those portions of your body, because for the next 20 minutes or so, this is the time in which we will travel together into the vast beauties of the mountains, where there is sunshine, where there is wind, and if you listen closely enough, you might even hear the beats of the flying Andean condor. The Andean condor is, of course, a bird. Its scientific name is Volter Griffiths. We will be going a little bit deeper into why it is called the Volter Griffiths at the end of the episode when we go into the etymology section. But for now, just know that I have no scruples with this scientific name because of how apt it is. The Andean condor is the largest flying bird in the world with its combined measurement of both weight and wingspan the andean condor is truly a goliath in the air their body alone will be about four feet and their wingspan is going to be up to ten and a half feet that's about 3.2 meters measuring roughly two times the height of an average female person 
they will be weighing up to 33 pounds or 15 kilograms. This is an animal that when they fly over you, you might be in the shade for a second or two. This bird is big, but 33 pounds or 15 kilograms for those who prefer that measurement might not sound like a lot, especially when we compare it to other large animals. We might think about the Asian elephant being about 9,000 pounds. Maybe you even grip straight to the blue whale weighing in at over 440,000 pounds. But what makes the Andean condor huge at 33 pounds is relative to other bird species and other flyers as a whole. A bird like the flamingo, for example, sporting a very tall stature, is going to weigh actually just about 8 pounds. So the Andean condor is going to be over four times the weight of a flamingo, still fly and sport the largest flying bird in the world. The reason they can stay so light at 33 pounds with a wingspan of 3.2 meters or 10 and a half feet is because of the hollow bones that they have. Bones are heavy and theirs will be more hollowed out than bones like me and you have. As human beings, we have varying bone densities, but all in all, our bones are quite hefty. That's not the case for the Andean condor. And as its name suggests, the Andean condor inhabits much of the Andes mountain range that is going to lie along western South America, and in specific, the Pacific coast region. It can be found all the way from northern Venezuela to Colombia, traveling even all the way south to Tierra del Fuego. So it is quite likely that many of you South American listeners have seen this giant bird at one point or another. With their very large wingspan, they are going to need some help to keep them up in the air. And this is why the Andean condor prefers to be in more windy areas than those that have no wind at all. Because just like surfers on waves, the Andean condor is going to glide on those air currents as they come and catch a lift each time, allowing them to fly with actually very little effort. The reason they like coasts is because there are many ocean breezes there and they even like certain deserts because they will also have very strong thermal air currents. So these air surfers are going to find the places with the best waves or the best air currents and breezes and ride them whenever they can. The physical characteristics of the Andean condor is pretty interesting. When Charlie had first requested this episode and I went on Mr. Google to find out what exactly they looked like, they didn't exactly fit the bill of what I was expecting. They look like a mixture between a vulture, a very large turkey, and of course like other condors. But they will sport mostly a black plumage but males will have a distinctive white collar around their necks and sometimes will even have white markings on their wings as well. So if you want to tell the difference between a female and male Andean condor, their white collar gives it right away. Like gentlemen in feathery tuxedos, it makes it easy for us to tell the difference. Now, because of the fact that they are able to really ride these air currents and without much exertion, this will allow them to fly tremendous distances at one time. In a single day, they have been seen to fly as far as 180 miles or 300 kilometers in search of food. So as some of you may have noticed, the scientific name Volter means that condors are vultures. And vultures, of course, eat carrion, which means animals that have already died. This carrion for the Andean condor is going to make up the majority of their diet. 
They act as nature's cleanup crew, so they will prefer to feast on pretty large animals, wild or even sometimes domestic, where they will pick at the carcasses and function as organic janitors. So this might change depending on where specifically the Andean condor is. If it is along the coasts, condors will often feed on dead marine animals like seals or fish, but along certain more arid plains in South America, they will of course have more access to these land-dwelling mammals that they like so much. Now, despite the fact that the Andean condor seems to have a bit of a dirty job, they do really keep hygienic by grooming themselves and keeping their feathers nice and neat, so they will use these hooked beaks that they have to clean or preen, as it is called, their plumage. One thing you might notice about the Andean condor is that it sort of has a bald head. Not entirely, they often have a few stray feathers here and there, but that is not exclusive to the Andean condor that is inclusive of all vultures. And here we may engage in the art of deductive reasoning to find out why exactly this is. Well, because they are scavengers and they eat mostly dead things, to get at the meat that they want to eat, they will sometimes put their heads pretty deep into the cavities of stinking or rotting carcasses. So we can imagine that if the Andean condor had a feathery mohawk of some kind, there would be a greater chance of some form of bacterial infection or germs to grow as they penetrate deeper into the feathers. But with a nice shaved bald head, the condor can stay cleaner than it would with a full head of hair. And the Andean condor happens to be Chile's national bird and is even part of their coat of arms. It has some pretty cool cultural impacts in Chile, even being featured in one of Chile's most popular comics. There is a famous cartoon character called Condorito. This cartoon Andean condor has been bringing joy to both kids and adults alike. They also serve as a symbol in Patagonia. For those of you not so familiar with Patagonia, it is in South America. It is at really the southernmost tip of it and is shared by both Chile and Argentina. The Andes Mountains which act as a sort of partition between the two. And in Patagonia, they will serve to be symbolic of power, liberty, and health. So we can see that this creature is pretty well thought of in South America. And the condor is part of the Inca trilogy, as it is called. The condor is right beside the puma and the snake. And the Incas believed that the condor was a kind of sacred bird representing the idea of heaven. That, to me, is of particular interest. I would have to assume that it wouldn't be because of their eating habits, throwing their whole heads into rotting carcasses, but I'm sure that there are many cultural and contextual clues that I am missing here. Context is king, and without it, all we can do is really speculate. Perhaps it is because when they make a nest, condors love to lay their eggs on the edge of a cliff. Now some parents listening might shudder at the prospect of having little baby birds right by a gaping precipice, but there is actually a good reason for it. These cliffs and rocky outcrops are mostly inaccessible except to many bird species. With areas that are that high up, it would be hard for some ground predators to come and snatch away the eggs. And after they hatch, they will live a very long life. Wild condors have been seen to live up to 50 years in the wild. And of course, in captivity, that number only gets higher. The oldest condor that we know about lived to be 80 years of age. 
For many bird species, 80 years is very impressive. And while the Andean condor might enjoy its privacy during the day, at night, Andean condors will all come together to sleep and can be found in some pretty big numbers as they roost on high cliffs and those rocky outcrops. But despite their very long lifespan, they do reproduce slowly. A mating pair produces only one single offspring every other year, and both parents are going to be responsible for the care of their young for one full year. So it is not like many species in which they can lay hundreds of eggs and then just leave them there. They might be more like us in this regard, in which their children or their young are a commitment, a wonderful commitment to raising the offspring that it may grow just as big with just as big a wingspan as mom and dad. Now let us move on to the etymology of the scientific name of the Andean condor, which is again Volter Griffiths. Both of those might ring a bell to you, so we'll start with the first one. Volter was changed in the 14th century into vulture, which we of course know, but the word vulture is an Anglo-French word and goes all the way back to the Latin valere, which means to pluck and to tear. If you have ever seen a vulture eat, this is exactly how they do it. They methodically hammer their beaks into a carcass to pluck and to tear as they eat. The second word, griffis, has a long history, and most recently in the 1200s was changed to griffin. You might know that the griffin is a sort of fantastical creature which was very much in favor in Greek mythology. But it comes from the late Latin griffis, which came from the Greek grips, which meant a griffin or dragon, but more literally translated as curved or hook-nosed. So the scientific name of the Andean condor would literally be translated as the curved or hook-nosed plucker or terror, one of the most apt scientific names that I have come across thus far. And that word condor actually just means a large South American bird of prey. It was coined in about the 17th century in the 1600s from American Spanish and goes all the way back to Quechua, which is Inca, and their word for the condor was Kuntur. So the native name of the bird condor was sort of taken and adapted in the 1600s to have what we can now call the condor. What a wonderful etymological review this episode. Let us go to the review portion of the show in which I read a review left by one of you very special listeners out there. And for today, we are going to be reading one that was written by a user named 11Reware. And Reware is writing all the way from the United States of America and writes, One of the best podcast ever. I love animals, but I have so much going on, so I love just putting in my earbuds and learning about animals. I listen before bed and while I am working. Love this podcast. You should seriously listen to the show. Thank you, Reware, for a very kind review. I am very glad that the show is a part of your nightly routine as well as your work routine. If you would like to leave a review like 11Reware did, it is one of the greatest ways to give back to the show if it has been helpful for you because it helps more listeners find the show. It helps grow our animal podcast family. And so we can have more and more company as we trek into forests or dive into seas. All of your reviews that you have been leaving show the generosity of all of you listening. And again, if you would like to request an animal for the show, you can do so by following Relax With Animal Facts and sending a direct message. 
you can go to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com and click on the animal request tab. And lastly, you could always send an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. This was an amazing episode. Thank you again, Charlie, for such a suggestion. I hope that all of you have enjoyed the journey into the mountains and that you will join me on the next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.